Surely, God, that 
in this time we're in. We need your presence. We need your spirit. We need your anointing. So God, everything truly else can wait. Just give me you. It's, God, I'm not really asking for a blessing this morning, but just simply for your presence. For in spite of what I'm going through, dealing with, if your presence isn't with me, then I can still have a smile on my face when others are crying. If your presence is with me, I can still shout after a bad doctor's report. If your presence is with me, in spite of all nonsense and drama around me, I still can say the Lord is still God. I don't need your presence this morning. Just allow your presence to fall down this morning. Just, God, we don't need a house or a car, but just give me you. We, we don't need diamonds or money or pearls. God, just give us you. God, we just showing up. Needing your presence this morning. Have your way, God. Have your way. God is always... Without your presence, I can't proclaim your word publicly, properly. God, allow me to proclaim publicly what you've allowed me to prepare for privately. That this word can be for somebody that is at their wit's end. Unsure about how they're going to make it or what they're going to do. That they can hear and receive this word today and run on just a little while longer. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen, 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 and amen. If you would turn with us to 2 Kings chapter number 3, 2 Kings chapter number 3, uh, we'll begin reading at verse number 11 for time's sake, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll preach quite a few other verses. 2 Second, Second Kings chapter number 3, 2 Kings chapter number 3, beginning at verse number 11. Uh, for time's sake, we'll begin at verse number 11. Again, we're in the series Elijah and Elisha. Um, we spent four or five weeks with Elijah. Now, last week, we picked up with Elisha as the mantle was passed on and as he requested a double portion of what was on the prophet Elijah. Second Kings chapter number 3, beginning at verse number 11. This morning, we'll read from the New King James Version. And it says, but Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here who poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Edom, went down to him. Then Elijah said to the king of Israel, what have I to do with you? Another version, the 2021 version says, why are you even bothering me? You know we don't roll like that. Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother Jezebel. But the king of Israel said to him, no, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the land of the Moab. No, I don't believe it. Verse number 14, Elijah, and as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you if it was not for him. The 2021 version says, if you didn't have Jehoshaphat here, I wouldn't even be talking to you. That the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, thus says the Lord. Well, that happened when the musician played. He, he says in verse number 15, but now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Another version would say, go out and just keep digging ditches in the valley. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with water so that you, your cattle and your animals may drink. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. Just, just for a few minutes of your time, I want to use quickly for a subject or a thought. Uh, just start digging. Just start, just start digging. Just start digging. Just, just repeat after me. Look at somebody. Don't touch them and say, just start digging. My 
brothers and sisters, we solicit your prayers in this word that may not be in the contemporary fashion that we'll give it, but we want to give it to you. Just start digging. Brothers and sisters, growing up, uh, no surprise to many of you all at Greater Peace, but growing up, I loved candy. I, 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 I had a desire to always have some candy. I, I get it on this because my mother loved candy. Uh, I, my grandmother, Grandmother Hicks, loved candy. And my mom still loves candy. And I grew up in an era that I just loved candy. We had candy in my pocket. Mom had candy in a purse. Y'all ever, y'all remember the time when you can ask a mother or a woman for some candy and they had it in their purse? And so mom always had some candy in her purse. I loved candy. And if you grew up in the era like me, before me, or with me, you remember that growing up we had some good candy. Uh, Brother Rodney, we didn't have the candy they had today, but we had some real good candy. Y'all y'all may remember we had things like Tootsie Rolls and Smarties and Fun Dip where you got a stick and you dipped it in the Kool-Aid, the color, and you began to eat. We we had things like Now and Later, Pixie Sticks where you had to open the Pixie Stick just right, not let your mouth touch it or all the stuff wouldn't come out. You, you had to have a strategy to eat some of our candy. Y'all remember candy like Jawbreakers, eh? Atomic fire bombs, Jolly Ranchers, Chico sticks, lifesavers. But y'all remember, Rodney, that thing called some pop rocks where you would put the I wish I had somebody grew up with me. You you would put it right in your mouth and it began to sizzle and make some noise. We we had candy uh, like ring pops where you would give a young lady a ring that had candy so she can eat the ring and, and pledge your love to her all at the same. We had a whole lot of candy. Some of y'all don't remember, but we had caramel squares. We had Laffy Taffies. We we had all kinds of candy, but my favorite candy slash snack, Tasha Bradley, all of those were good. I loved them, but my favorite was Cracker Jacks. Antron, I love Cracker Jacks. You got it in the box, First Lady, and it had some caramel on it, a little flavor of molasses. It had some crunchy peanuts, and I love opening the box and digging in to get some Cracker Jacks. But can I tell you, President Parker, on your birthday, why I really love Cracker Jacks is because that when I kept digging in the box, there was always a prize down there waiting on me. I feel preaching coming in here. Here. And no matter how much I had to dig, I always knew that there would be a prize. And can I be honest with you, Sister Stephanie, Cracker Jacks ain't never let me down. I, I never dug and got to the end and didn't have a prize waiting on me. Such is the case in life today where somebody can testify, Sister Sheila, that I've always started digging and if God told me to dig, there was always something waiting on me at the end, is that anybody's testimony that you know God is like Cracker Jacks? He ain't never disappointed you if you just keep on digging. And somebody this morning got to understand that no matter what you're going through, you got to keep on digging. Because Cracker Jacks were easy to get the prize. But y'all remember a lot of cereals had prizes too. And they were a whole lot bigger. Y'all know y'all got a whooping like I did for pouring out the cereal trying to dig in to get the prize at the end and mama and grandmama wanted to go ahead and just whoop you. They got that wet rag that they were washing dishes with and hit you with it because you wasted their cereal and money. But can I tell you why you had to keep digging in the cereal? There was always a joy because there was always a prize. And I came to tell 19 of y'all that God told me to tell you this morning, if you keep on digging, no matter how much and how hard you you got to dig. There is something waiting at the end. And such is the case in our text where we find Elisha in the midst, thinking Carter, of some different times. Elijah's gone. Elisha has the mantle. He has the double anointing. He's ready to go out. Israel is still acting up. But the chapter opens by stating that Jehoram is the new king of Israel. 
His reign lasts for about 12 years, and you may not be familiar with them, but I'm sure you know his mama and his daddy. He's the son uh, of King Ahab and the son of the wicked one, Jezebel. And so the Bible lets us know, you got to go back up in chapter number three, around verse number two, that, 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 that Jehom was not as bad as his daddy or mama, but he had some evil ways nonetheless. Because when you look at the text, Deacon Wedding, and when you look at the text around chapter number two, Chairman Spencer, it says that he took down the things of Baal. He took down the things that were Baal that his father and his mother had made. But that does not mean that Baalism didn't exist. It just means that he took them down. And you got to understand that, in other words, he, he, he deserves judgment, though he was not as evil as his daddy. Let me stop right there. See, some of y'all are hanging on the fact that you're not as evil or as bad as somebody else. But you got to understand that you still got some evil nature in you. That you may not be as bad as everybody else or somebody else, but there's still some stuff that you need to work on. Let me stay right there. Is that anybody's testimony? No, I ain't as bad as this person, that person. But I still got some stuff that I got to work on because there's some evil inside of me. And so it's nothing for him to boast about that he was not as evil as his mama and his daddy because they were as evil as evil could come. So it's nothing to boast about that he's not evil because he still has a way. So he took down the signs of Baal, but he also have worshipped God. Let me stay there for a minute. He took down signs of Baal, but still have worshipped God. See, there have always been people people and always wouldn't be people that have only a partial half-hearted commitment to God. Y'all know them. Can I come down and see if you know any of them? They worship on Sundays. Offer grace at, at meals. They never use profanity. Never tell a dirty joke. Never watch or read pornography. Never steal, cheat, nor lie. Yet despite living this great moral life, they still ain't committed to God. I just lost some of them. Corella, let me see if I can go back and get them. See, here's what you got to get. Just because you don't lie, cheat, steal, or do all those things, if you don't have a high commitment to God and hold hearted commitment to God you still got some stuff missing in your life. Y'all ever seen somebody that talk about how holy they, how moral they live but they ain't never spent any time in the church. They'll never you never see them unless it's a funeral or a holiday. I came to let somebody know that we gotta stop this double mindedness. We, I'm trying to get not in trouble President Nunley but I'm about to get in trouble now. We gotta stop as Christians excuse Using people from having a double mind that they're acting like they're living a good life but still not committed to God. See, you can read the verses, you can read the Bible, you can post words on Facebook, but you gotta have a wholehearted commitment to the one that died on Calvary for you. So he's he's not as bad as Ahab, but not as bad as Jezebel, but he still has some things that he needs to handle. He's trying. In other words, he's playing, uh, the, he's playing the field. He's straddling the fence. He's, he, he, he's not worshiping Baal, but he ain't worshiping God. And all of a sudden, things began to get interesting for Jehem here. Uh, you gotta, this is a good reminder because what happens is he comes up with this plan to get with King Jehoshaphat. And the other king of Edom, the, uh, Jehoshaphat of Edom and, 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 and the other king, and, and, and they get a plan because uh, uh, the people of Moab are starting to rise up against him. And so he gets this strategy and says, I'm going to get with them. He hooks up with them, and uh, they decide that they're going to go up and surround the people of Moab. Uh, and, and the people of Moab, they, they got mad. They had a new king called Mesha, and, and he got mad because... Uh, they, they were taking the cattle at, at a high rate. And let me bring it to 2021. Uh, they, were, they, they were taxing the people at a high rate. Let me, let me try it like this. It, it's like that they had uh, millions of dollars and found loopholes in the taxes and didn't pay nothing. But uh, these people over here that had little had to pay a whole lot. I, I'm not saying anything, Brother K. 
CP, but I'm just saying, kind of make sure you understand the text. And so they got fed up. And in the midst of that, they say, no, we ain't going to take it anymore. I'm trying to hurry, Dondra, but I believe now as Christians, we got to stand up to this world and say, no, I'm not going to take it. We got to let Washington know and everywhere else know that we're no, we're not going to take this nonsense. Thank you, President Parker, for representing us in D.C., telling them, no, we ain't going to let you take away our voting rights. I, I need some bold Christians that say, no, we ain't going to take it. There's a song I can't remember, but we ain't going to take it anymore. Is that anybody's testimony? You willing to tell truth to the powers that be? And so they say, we ain't going to take it. He gets his plan, hooks up with these two other kings. And they get up there, and all of a sudden, the animals don't have water. They're thirsty. Everybody's thirsty. There's no water nowhere. They're off in the midst, and they've messed up and found themselves being beat by an enemy that's smaller than them. And let me stop right there, Mother Gary, because I've discovered that even if your enemy is smaller than you or smaller in number than you, if you don't have God, you still can mess around and get in a whole lot of trouble. And so that's them in the text, Joshua, that they, 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 they said that's enough. And now they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. Let this serve as a reminder that we will be tempted to live by our impulses rather than God's word. Let me say that again. Somebody needed that. Be careful that we do are, are not tempted to live by our own impulses rather than God's word. We need to seek God's word on every matter of our life. Uh, let me hurry, but uh, here's what I want you to get. Don't rush off into life without the essential resource of getting a word from God. I'm trying to hurry, but somebody needed to hear that because you're getting ready to rush off and do some stuff and you ain't heard from God yet. And so you got to be careful living off your own impulses. You got to learn how to lean and wait on the word of God. So Jehoram begins to complain. He's blaming God even though he didn't seek God. Y'all ever been there that you're blaming God for the predicament that you're in when you didn't seek God before you got in the predicament? And so he's blaming God. There's no water. The people are complaining, and now they're trying to figure out what to do. But then Jehoshaphat, I love Jehoshaphat because, uh, it, it, you know, the phrase that always says, uh, better late than never. He didn't seek God before he hooked up with the king but now he says wait a minute is there a prophet in the land and I wonder I wonder sometime when I watch these TV evangelists when I see the world that it is that we're in I wonder is, are there still prophets in the land but the good news is that God still has his prophets out there and Jehoshaphat said is there a prophet in the land one of the servants don't miss this and I gotta get to the point one of the servants says, Elisha, uh, the one that poured water on the hands of Elijah, he's out there. And, 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 and then Jehoshaphat said, go get him. But, but, but King Jehoram was kind of like, wait a minute. Jehoshaphat said, no, nah, you got me in this mess. Now we got to see what thus says the Lord. And what it really meant when it said he poured water on the hands of Elijah, it simply meant that that servant Elisha is out there. I got to stop there because my question is, don't, don't look at me strange. Don't get mad at me. The question that I have, President Watts, for myself and everybody today is, what are you known for? Let me stop right there. I'm trying not to go too far too fast, but he's known as a servant. And, and in other words, when they call his name, servant comes to mind. The question is, when people call your name, what comes to their mind? Is it servant? Is it a worshiper? Is it giver? Is it a mess keeper? Is it a drama filler? What, what, what is a negativity? What comes to mind when people call your name? Anybody ever glad that when people call your name that sometimes they think of some good stuff like anointed, gifted spiritually, the servant of God willing to do everything? We got to make sure our name is right. 
Elijah got an attitude. Elisha has an attitude. He said, what, what, what we got to do with each other? I'm just walking through the text. Some of them don't know the story. Sister Richards, I'm walking through. He said, what we, what we got in common? Why are we even trying to kick it? We don't roll like that together. So why are you coming to me now? And then he says, Brother Mike, if Jehoshaphat wasn't here, if he didn't vouch for you, <laughs> then we wouldn't even be having a conversation. But in the midst of all of that, in the midst, God still allows the prophet to bless those that didn't stun him when they got in the situation. Let me try to tell you like this. Here's what I've discovered. Sister Charmin, I discovered, Trina, that sometimes we treat God like an airbag in a car. That it never comes out unless it's an emergency and we got an impact. See, we got to stop treating God like an airbag in a car that we only call on him in emergency situation. But we got to call and have a lifetime sus uh, submission to the word and the way of God. See, some of us only call in an emergency. Some of us treat God like Geico or Progressive or State Farm. That we only pick up the phone and call when there's an emergency. But that's why I like the old church. Because the old church mother said that I got a telephone down in my bosom. And I can dial them up and call them from my heart. Not just when I'm in trouble. But I can talk to him every day of my life. He then says, he then says, Brother Stanton, he says, Okay, I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and do this, God, God I, I'm going to talk to God for you. But what messed me up, Dondra, what messed me up wrong was the fact that he said, before I do it, go get me a musician. It, it's in the text. I just read it. He says, he says, he says, he says, Brandon, go get a musician. The musician came and began to play. And as the musician played, the prophet began to talk to God. And as, as, as the musician's playing and the prophet's talking to God, God begins to send a good news message down. And it, it, it lets me know. Y'all remember that, 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 that when Saul was angry, David, the worship leader, had to worship to calm down the situation. All, all I'm trying to tell you is that music glorifies God and can tune you into the heart of God. That worship, you ought to worship before you study. Worship before you pray. Worship is a weapon against the enemies that are around you. You ought to worship no matter what you're doing, where you are. Because it's your worship that connects you to God. I'm trying not to get in trouble. Deacon Dixon, I'm trying. But see, it's what I've discovered. Uh, this, uh, this, this one messed me up, Ron. This one messed me up. It's what I've discovered. Because if you remember sometime that, that, that I hear sometime, well, I don't know that song. I, I, I'm, try, I'm, uh, I'm trying to be I, I I don't know that song. That, that's some of that other stuff. I don't know that song, but... I know precious Lord. Here's what I've discovered. Even if you don't know the song, you ought to recognize the anointing. That somebody can speak in Spanish. <laughs> and you may not know what they're saying, but you can see the anointing. I'm just trying to tell you that when you're a real worshiper, the anointing is on you. And you're able to get in touch with God. And so, I got to go. I got to go. And he says, bring me a musician. They begin to worship. Tells them, go dig some ditches in the valley. Just keep on digging them. You ain't going to see a sign of rain. You ain't going to see no rain, no wind, or nothing else. But just keep on digging the ditches because there's going to be some water in it. Can I give you three points and I'm hurrying to get out of here. Me and Josh got to go. First of all, I see there will be times when your greatest problems or your greatest need becomes your greatest blessing. Because it's that problem or that need that drives you to a closer relationship with God. And I know I'm not the only one that can testify that need or that problem that I had turned into a greater blessing because it drove me down to my knees and drove me calling on the name of God. Is that anybody's testimony this morning that if it had not have been for that problem or that need, you wouldn't be in the church right now. You wouldn't be worshiping the way you are now. You wouldn't be lifting hands the way you are now. But that problem problem turned into the blessing that drove you to God. And I got to tell you, we got to get back to getting people 
and the mindset to get closer to God. And see, see here, I hear somebody saying, yeah, I, I'm close to God. No, 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 you close to God on Sunday morning. But do you still have that closeness on Wednesday or Thursday? See, see, you're close to God now because you got a problem that you can't solve on your own. But when God solves the problem, will you still be just as close to him? Will you still pray three times a day? Will you still fast? Will you still worship? Will you still praise? Will you still tithe and give? God wants you to be totally committed. Somebody said, come on, start digging some ditches. Let's dig a trail all the way through. You ain't going to see no wind. You ain't going to see no rain. But it's going to be water to drink. And so secondly, this is what helped me. This liberated me, Mike, that there will be times when you have to push through and labor to get what came easy before. Let me say it again. I know it's a lot, but you got to get it. There will be times when you have to push through and labor to get what came easy before. You don't get it. That's because you ain't been following the series. You ain't been studying. You have not been going back. We put it on Wednesday and Saturday. We post it on Facebook and YouTube. Just the sermon and the song before so you'll be ready for what's coming this Sunday. Some of y'all didn't watch it this week and you're not ready for the test today. And how can I tell you and prove this? Because you got to go back to Elijah. In first king, in, 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 yeah, first king, uh, second, first and second kings. Because y'all remember there was a drought. And Elijah told King Ahab, just go down and get the celebration coming because rain is going to come. They didn't get it because they didn't get it. Uh, Cousin Johnny Ruth, they didn't get it. Uh, uh, so, uh, and the rain came and the drought ended. The prophet told the king, just go get the party ready. You ain't got to do nothing. The rain going to come. Now they need water and now they got to dig to get what it is that God promised them. Y'all missed it. Let me come back. Let me pick you up. Uh, 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 so you got to understand that, that, that before God allowed it to be easy, all they had to do was show up at the party and the rain was there. But this time God said, no, I need y'all to put a little labor in this thing. Y'all got to put some work in this thing. Y'all ever been there that you went through some stuff before and it was easy? But this time God has made it hard where you got to dig and push and work and labor and cry and sweat and walk the floor late at night. God said, this blessing ain't coming easy. I wish I had a prophetic kind of Pentecostal crown that'll receive that today. Your next blessing, I know what the other prophets tell you, but this prophet is telling you the next blessing ain't coming easy. I ain't telling you it's coming in 7, 10 days, 15 days. I ain't selling you no water or a handkerchief. What I'm trying to tell you is this next blessing, you're going to have to work for it. See, before it was easy. But this time, they got to work for it. <laughs> See, digging a ditch simply is creating space that only God can fill. <laughs> See, they couldn't fill the ditch. God had to fill the water. And when you're digging uh, in your life, you're creating space that only God can fill. I feel the preaching. So what it is, we ought to be digging, not just in the world around us to try to get a blessing, but we got to start digging in our hearts. <laughs> And get some of the dirt out of our hearts. Because that will make some room for God to fill with some anointing and some gifts. I'm preaching better than some of y'all saying amen. So God said you got to keep on digging. But this time you, you're going to get the blessing. But this time you're going to have to work harder for it. I'm done man. I'm done. I'm over time. There will be times when you have to push through and labor to get what came easy before. There'll be times when your greatest problem or need becomes your greatest blessing because it drives you closer to God. And then thirdly, and I'm done, there will be times when you must have the spirit of expectancy. It's, it's there in the text because he tells them to dig some ditches. Now, what messed me up, thank you, Holy Spirit, that before, yeah, it came easy. They got the water or the rain. And it wasn't no work or labor. This time they got to work and labor for it. But here's what you got to understand. They had already been marching around the area and fighting in battles. They're tired and they're weak. 
But in the midst of helping them in their tiredness and weakness in their need, God tells them to exert some more energy. Y'all missed that. Y'all acting like super Christians. Here's what you got to get. That sometime, I know, I hear you. I'm tired too. I'm weak too. But God says that even when you're tired and weak, I still need you to exert some more energy. God says, I know, I know you've been knocked down, you're beat up. I understand. But I still need you to exert some more energy and some labor. And I wonder, is there seven? I don't need 14. But I wonder, is there seven people that say, yeah, I'm tired. Tired. I, yes, I'm weak. Yes, I'm worn. Yes, I'm disappointed. Yes, I'm hurt. Yes, I'm bothered. But I'm still going to muster up enough energy to start digging because God told me to start digging. Is that anybody's testimony? You tired right now, but you're getting the shovel ready and you're getting ready to start digging. You're hurt, disappointed now, but you're getting the shovel out and you're getting ready to start digging. What I love about the people is they dug expecting God to do it. And it's right there. They didn't ask no questions, but they start digging. And what I love about it, First Lady Neil, is they didn't dig just one or two ditches. But they kept digging all the way down the valley because they weren't expecting God to send them a little water. But they were expecting God to send them a great multitude of water. And see, here's what you got to understand, that often we have to prepare for the divine blessings of God long before we see them. And you got to understand that our expectant face is in the valley, and we got to keep on digging. And what I really found interesting is that he was the only one that could send the water. But they just had to keep on digging. And we also know that blessings arrive in sudden spurts. Anybody ever been there where you didn't see a sign, but all of a sudden the blessing was right there? And that's what happened because the prophet said, you ain't going to see any wind. You won't see a drop of rain. But all of a sudden, you'll see water without a sign. And I got to leave you here now. But brother, I, brother King P, I discovered, I discovered, Sister Inez, that sometimes when God gets ready to bless you, he ain't going to show no signs. But it'll just show up out of nowhere. Is that anybody's testimony in here? You were disappointed. You had gave up on it. But then God showed up out of nowhere and had blessing just waiting for you. And I got to leave you here now. I know it ain't easy to keep digging ditches. But it wasn't easy one Friday on a hill called Calvary. But Jesus, he kept on going. Jesus, he kept on hanging. Jesus, he kept on enduring pain. He died, but he didn't stay dead. It was early on a Sunday morning that he got up. And President Robinson, since, since he got up, I can keep on digging. Since he got up, I can keep on digging. Since he got up, I'm tired, but I can keep on digging. I'm bothered, but I can keep on digging. I don't see a sign. I don't see rain. I don't feel the wind, but I'm going to keep on digging. I've discovered Corella. If you keep on digging, God is going to pour out a blessing. The songwriter said that you will not have room to receive it. Is that anybody's testimony? I wish I had 13 people that'll just stop clapping and shouting and just get the most. The ground may be hard, but keep on digging. 
it may be tiresome, but keep on digging because I tell you every Sunday, we paint may endure for a night, but John, John come in the morning. Can I tell you, I can keep on digging because I know he's all right. Yes, 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 he is. I 